welcome everyone. Um, this is our height of summer 2013 update. This is a Yamadori dogwood that uh, I collected this spring. And as you can see, it's doing really well. It's got a really neat Nabari on it. Pretty decent sized trunk as well. Uh, we're going to be doing some videos on that one here this this uh, fall slash spring. And uh, let's see what else we have right here with a pine tree branch in it is the Sharps Pygmy. As you can see, it's doing very well. It's got just an immense amount of new growth, as I projected it would. Um, some of you may notice I did chop the top of this thing back a little bit more. I felt that it was not quite compact enough for the overall design I was going for. Um, another, I've got a pine tree that all these are under, and of course it drops branches every once in a while. There's the cut that we made this spring on reducing that lower branch, and if you look at that thing, it's almost completely healed over already this year, so I'm pretty excited about that. Just goes to show with the proper growing techniques and the proper fertilization schedule, you can achieve great growth and very well healing abilities in your trees. This is a little little project of mine that I have going on. I don't really haven't really shown it in it much other than the journey to my benches videos. But this is a Japanese black pine, and I'm growing it as a Shohin to Chuhin size. Um, this right here is actually the apex of the tree. This is all sacrificial growth that's happened. Um, I'm going to be reducing it from here all the way down to this back branch here. That's going to be the cut. So the final apex of this tree is going to be here. Um, it's got some really nice movement. It's got a ton of low branches and it's got a pretty thick base. The base on that thing's probably a good inch and a half to two inches now. So that's going to be a pretty neat little project. We're going to do some videos on that. Um, I'm still battling squirrels. This is actually off of the longleaf pine tree in my yard that's shading all these trees. This is it here. It's uh, probably 20-25 foot tall tree. Squirrels are attacking it. They're after the pine nuts and they chew sections of pine off and this is what they do. They, the uh, pine cones. Nonetheless, this is a chalk bark maple, native species here to South Carolina. Uh, this is a Yamadori. I collected this last last year, or year before last, I can't remember which. This is the leader. It's growing very well this year. It's got a decent trunk on it. Uh, the Nabaris, when I do these collected trees, I try to plant the Nabaris well underground so they can establish a nice radial and fine root base. This is just the base of the tree down to about right here is where the Nabari starts on this thing. So once you, once we start planting these in, tra in bonsai pots, you'll see a lot better root base on a lot of these trees, but nonetheless it's doing really well. This is a Euonymus or a burning bush. Um, this is another nursery material project. I'm not really 100% sure what I want to do with it yet. Um, as you can see it's kind of kind of a clump style I guess. It's got a little bit of trunk here but mainly it's a clump style. Um, these two branches are kind of the same size. This one's slightly larger separated by a smaller one. Um, we've got a back branch here and we've got another one here. It's just one of those trees that I kind of impulse bought because I hadn't seen a Euonymus with a nice th thick trunk like this before. I mean that trunk's bigger around than a pop can so it's a pretty decent size. Um, didn't have a really good root base on it. I did an air layer on it. Separated the air layer, stuck it in this pot and as you can see it survived. It's doing quite well but just not 100% sure what's going on. A little update. That's the wing bark dome that we did that failed. I threw it on the ground there and kind of forgot about it and it's still alive believe it or not. Um, the main trunk is not alive. These are all 
suckers that have come up from the root basin. This thing's just sitting on the ground. We've had so much rain this year that it just decided it wasn't going to die, so I'm leaving it be. Uh, barberry. This is a really nice, really, really old, old, old barberry. This was collected out of a mansion down here in South Carolina. There are a lot of old plantation mansions around, and this thing was collected out of the landscaping of one of them that was being torn down in place of it is going to be an apartment complex, believe it or not. So, anyway. Stewardia, not a whole lot of development this year with this thing. Um, it's still holding its own. It's still growing and thickening up and I'm letting it do its thing. This thing was smaller than the size of a pencil two years ago. Yeah, I don't know if you can see the base on that thing. There we go. But the base of it's thickening up quite nicely now. I'm getting a little bit of fissured bark on it already this year. Here's a little bit of the what's going on here with the trunk. Most stewardias are uh, upright type of growth habit. I'm trying to do this one a little bit of informal upright, just something a little bit different that you don't typically see on a stewardia, just to be different. Uh, let's see here, this is the American Elm. <clears throat> That's the new leader that we're letting grow freely. You can see it extends up quite a bit. And that's a good thing. That's the one that we wired and selected as the new leader, if you remember from this spring. And like I said, I just let it grow freely. It's thickened up about, about as large as an index finger. And it's doing quite well. Next up is the coral bark maple that we did. Um, if you remember, I said there was some dead growth. There was some a dead spot up here at the top, and I didn't know if it was going to survive or not. And it has kind of compartmentalized around that area and is actually starting to heal over. Uh, this is some just the bark. If I remove this bark, you can actually see it's callousing. It's probably 50% calloused over underneath this bark. So, once again, I can't stress it enough. You know, proper growing techniques, proper watering and fertilization techniques. It has completely healed over underneath that dead spot right there. There's no exposed wood whatsoever. Now, it's going to be kind of an ugly scar, but just something we're going to have to live with for a while. Eventually it may end up going away. The thread grafts have taken. This is the outside. This is the leader side, I guess you could say, or the new branch side. This is where it goes through the tree. You see the, the th difference in thickness is considerable. That means that this graft has taken on this side and it is acting independently from the parent branch that it came from. So we will be able to remove these this spring. This one here is another one. If you can, I don't know if you can see behind here or not, but it has taken very well as well. That's the old branch, new branch. It's about twice as thick as the other one. So we'll be able to remove every last one of these. If we get up close to this thing, you can see there's a bunch of callusing around here, and, it, and that's where it fused together. Down here we got the same situation. It calloused over and it's fused together. So it's doing really well. Um, now as far as the apex, this was going to be the apex here. It's not doing real well. There was one, another branch right directly behind it that came up and I let it, I'm letting it grow free. This will be the new apex. Um, it's now the apically dominant portion of the plant. These here were trying to be apically dominant. I had a bunch of them all the way around the tree that were trying to be apically dominant. They're still doing it. What I've been doing is going around and just pinching as they come up just the uh, center leading bud on all these. What that does is that prevents them from getting any larger. There's another one there. There's another one here. Just don't be afraid to keep your trees in check because I'm telling you, you don't want you want the leader to be where you want the leader to be and you want the rest of them just to kind of play along. Um, we'll be doing some more on this one next spring as well. Here's the trident maple, and this is our new apex that we're growing. As you can see, it's doing considerably well. Um, there's a little bit of wire scarring on there. I'm not too concerned with that. That'll go away next year. The wound is almost healed over. 
as you can see it's doing really well uh, if I was to peel this off you would probably see that most of it's already healed completely over this is the cut that we made where the old leader was as you can see it's completely healed over so once again techniques that I am showing you guys are very successful so hopefully um, some of you are employing the same techniques and having the same success I am the grass are doing well um, it this one has taken it's not taken as well as I would like it to but it is taking uh, this side is a little bit larger than where it comes through which is right here um, so that graft has taken this one up here as well if you can see the both sides of that those are almost the same size so they're still alive they're kind of stagnant right now they haven't put on a ton of growth but they are alive so they should take before the end of this year um, the branch that we cut off that's got the I don't know if you want to call them whirly birds or just the seed pods it's doing well the seeds are actually starting to mature to the point where they're drying I'm going to be removing these here shortly um, and we'll be focusing on some ramification and some things along those lines on the tree this spring as well next up is our nursery trident maple and it's doing fabulous as well I've got some growth in the back I've got a spot here and I've got a spot here um, not as much as I would like so what I've done is I'm allowing this one to grow freely to create a whip so I can use this one to thread graft I'm going to actually thread graft somewhere right about in here for a back branch um, I'm letting this one grow freely as well to create a whip so I have two options as far as thread grafting for a back branch here um, I'd also like to have another top branch or side branch somewhere in here possibly so this one will probably end up being a back branch and this top one I'll probably bring down and do it as a side branch that way we've got a branch here which could potentially be number one branch we've got the second branch here and then we'll have a third branch here and we'll have a back branch another branch here that we can do our carving down to create our taper as you can see this one's healing over really well also um, kinda wish I would have done the carving this this past spring but we'll still be able to do what we need to do because this leader's got a long way to go um, this thing's gonna be growing freely for probably three to four years it's gone about six to seven about five to six foot this growing season so it's still doing quite well more to come on that one over here is our other trident maple I did nothing to this tree this season and it shot up another oh probably four to six feet this growing season as well uh, we're getting to the point where we we've got a more realistic transition here between where the cut was and the new leader so we're probably going to do a cut back on this one this year this next season and start developing ramification on branches as well as apex um, if you remember at the beginning of the year this thing had dry I accidentally went well I went on vacation and it dried out and, and a lot of the leaves were dying turning dried out and uh, didn't look too healthy but I just kept persistently watering it making sure it was moist and it bounced back so it's doing really well I've got a couple branches I'm growing as whips always thinking ahead constantly thinking ahead I'm constantly growing letting specific branches that are sacrificial in a way um, grow and extend to create whip material so I can do thread grafting because I'm not real happy with these two branches here may end up keeping this one don't know that I'm gonna keep this one need some branches maybe like here instead of in the back maybe a branch here or somewhere we'll let you take a look at that one a little bit further as we get along this spring Satsuki Azalea um, this was an import from Japan of course as you know it's doing well it's healthy it completely flowered out this year I'm gonna be doing some uh, techniques on this one this year because these branches are getting to the point where they're a few years old now that's what a new lush branch looks like as you can see it's nice and plump this is an old branch you can see it kind of shrinks down and gets really woody 
and um, you don't want that to happen throughout the entire tree or what will happen eventually is it will actually end up dying because it constricts itself. So we'll be doing some things on that one. Still battling the squirrels here. I don't know what the problem is on the elm. Don't know why they like the elm. They love to dig. Do have some mouse traps in there, which is a deterrent, but it's not doing a whole lot. Um, letting this one go crazy. It's got quite a bit of growth on it. Got a lot of back budding here. Um, this is probably going to be the new apex, believe it or not, on this tree. I'm not too worried about the wire scarring because I've already decided that I'm going to choose probably this branch here. Um, and then probably this second one here and we're going to build a structure off of it considerably lower um, got a lot of nice stuff in the back here this one not not a whole lot but if we whack it back to here we'll get a lot more back budding this spring stay tuned on that here's my other chalk bark maple it's doing well um, the technique that I did to try to get the short internodial growths apparently is working and working well as you can see there's like a quarter of an inch where between that and the first one it's about an inch or better so I think I've got that technique pretty well nipped here's a new growth we've got we've got here at the base where it starts node here node here node here node here so they're all nice and compact um, so I'm happy to see that. That technique that I tried out seems to be working. Here's another one that you can see it really well. Really, really short internodial distances on these. So I think what we've done there is working. So stay tuned. We're going to have to be really, really uh, disciplined on this tree next spring to uh, make sure we employ that technique again. Uh, this one here is a crepe myrtle. Miami, I believe, is what it is. Um, haven't really done many videos on it. I'm going to be styling this one and put right, probably transferring it into a um, another pot this season. It needs to be repotted as well as the trident maples. They've been in their containers now for quite some time. This tree right here is a bald cypress. Got inundated with wood borers, died back. I can't kill anything, so I just kind of let it grow and do its thing. It's kind of stagnant. I don't know what I'm going to do with that tree. That tree's probably going to disappear out of my collection. Um, this is just something I was fooling around with. It was actually off of it was actually off of this parent plant. I did a cutting and I stuck it in here and let it grow, and I did a chop back to it back here and just been letting it grow. It's being thickened up, getting real tall. That one's going to disappear as well from my collection this year. I need the bench space. I can't put any more benches out here. And this tree, this tree, this here is a type of hawthorn. I don't know that I'm going to keep it either. Um, I need this. I need the bench space this season because I have something really, really special coming up. And it's going to take up a lot of room, so I need the bench space. <laughs> This here is a chalk bark maple, one of my favorites. It's a maple, the only one that I own. I would like, I used to have a really nice species chalk bark maple specimen. Um, it was in one of my collections I ended up having to let go due to a loss of job, so this is the only one I have. I'm going to be doing a little bit of work to it next season, trying to get the trunk to thicken up. I want it to be a nice, big, fat, single, single trunk specimen. Here's another crepe myrtle I have. Um, I think this one's called Fairy, if I'm not mistaken. It's got a really nice white flower. This is really the reason I got this tree, is because number one, it was cheap when I got it. But after this bark exfoliates like it is here, you can see it exfoliating. I can actually peel the good majority of it off here. Underneath, once this gets exposed to the air, it turns this rich, rusty, red russet color, and I love that. Um, not only that, but it's got a really nice root spread on it. and It's a twin trunk. I don't have a twin trunk, and it's a giant tree, and I got a really good deal on it, so we're developing it. Um, crepe myrtles do heal over very, very well, um, using the same technique as all. Here's the pyracantha that we just got done doing. Um, in the initial part of this, uh, I think this branch started out from where I wanted to save it about to here in my video. Since then, it's put on another probably two, two, two and a half foot of growth. Everywhere we've cut it back, it's got at least six to eight inches of new growth. 
the branch back in here that I wanted to develop to fill this void out is, the, is actually extending and doing well. I'm going to have to cut this thing back one more time this season. Um, constantly getting little sucker type shoots like this. As you can see, just periodically when these come through, you just pull them off. Um, just to keep kind of the energy directed to where you want it to be. There's some down here. Um, just so, stuff that you're going to have to do as far as maintenance is concerned on the tree throughout the season. This is an American hawthorn. And I'm going to probably be repotting this one and putting it in a smaller container and doing the initial styling. It's been four years, I think, in this container. And this is one of the giant containers. It's the last tree I have in a giant container. I need the bench space because the tree that's going in this on this bench is going to have to go in a giant container like this and so it's going to have to something's going to have to give so I'm going to have to move a couple of these trees around um, I think I'm going to put the Stewardia on this bench over here uh, probably the Euonymus on the bench over here and a couple of these trees are going to go on my back benches a couple Mm, not sure exactly which ones. Maybe the Trident Maple that's in training, the Japanese Maple that's in training. Definitely the uh, Dogwood. Because um, this bench right here is going to be full of big, significantly trunked trees. And the Granddaddy Hornbeam. As you can see, it's doing phenomenal. Um, I don't know if you can see, this is my arm. It's probably put. Oh, I don't know. A ton of growth. <laughs> Say three foot maybe on a lot of places. Kind of just let this one do its thing this year. Um, I was wanting to try to thicken up these main branches a little bit better. Um, only way to do that is just to let everything grow freely. We can cut it back uh, this fall or this spring when we do another styling on this one. Um, now that I've got the branches kind of thickened up and where I want them to be, I'll work on ramification. They're going to continue to thicken up as we go anyway, but I wanted to get them set in, set in place and thickened up. Another reason I've got a ton of these whips growing, I tried to put a branch here by doing an approach graft last year, and it was the a branch here that, that broke when I was doing the approach graft. And of course, it died as a consequence. So actually, I'm going to actually thread graft a branch into position right here next spring. Um, it's it needs it really bad. Um, we've got this branch here, and then it's completely bare all the way up till you get to here And so it really needs to have a branch up in this area right here to balance the tree out So we're going to be doing some thread grafting. So that's kind of why I'm letting it just I'm letting it g regain vigor. Um, it's been kind of sulking ever since I've collected it I mean, it's, it's grown well, but this year it's really grown well. I mean it's put off more growth this year than it has any previous year and I repotted it last year as well so I kind of wanted to let it re-energize so now that I know it's happy it's really well established in its new pot now we can start doing some some refinement and some ramification work here um, the new apex is kind of small still so we'll probably let this continue to grow freely um, it put on about two and a half three foot of growth so that's the uh, 2013 summer update on the benches. Hopefully you guys enjoy. Um, hopefully you can see that these techniques that I'm showing are, are really paying dividends as far as development and growth on the trees. Uh, hopefully they're doing the same in your area. Stay tuned. Um, this is kind of the, the time of year where there's not a whole lot going on, so it's not a lot of videos that we can produce. Um, but thank you all for joining me, and we will see you on the next one.